and welcome to Learn Free Music Theory, lesson number 36. So in today's lesson, we are going to be talking about uh, augmented and diminished triads, and then we're also going to be covering, well, I guess we have to do this part first, actually, is we're going to cover Roman numeral chordian. So it should be a pretty fun, not too, too hard lesson. Uh, the next three lessons or so are going to be on um, chord topics, so this should be pretty fun. I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, I hope you guys do too. So let's uh, get started right now. Okay guys, so the first thing we have in this one right here is um, I'm going to introduce a new concept, augmented and diminished triads. So before you remember we covered major and minor triads. Remember how major is a major third and a minor third and a minor triad is minor third, major third, right? There's a pattern to them. So now we're going to add in the augmented and the diminished triad. Pretty simple. Um, it's not that hard really. So as you remember, augmented means bigger and diminished means smaller. So if you can guess, hmm, I wonder what augmented and diminished triads do. They get bigger and smaller. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so this is how it works. So the formula for an augmented triad is a major third and another major third. So uh, just an example here. F to A, that's a major third, and A to A, uh, a to C sharp is another major third. So there you go. That's an augmented triad. Now over here, we have uh, F to e, uh, A flat is a minor third, and A flat to C flat is another minor third. So basically, um, that's pretty much it to these two topics, right, or these two triads right here. So the diminished are smaller, so they're comprised of two minor thirds, and the augmented is two major thirds. Now, remember before, just again, when we were doing the major and the minor, each one of them had one of each. They had a major and a minor third, but it was how you, what order you put them in is determined what uh, uh, triad you got. I wanted to say chord there, but it's not a chord, it's triad. Because triads, for, usually we refer to them as triads when they're three notes, and chords when they're four notes or more. But uh, that's kind of like the like over analytical way of saying it. Anyway, okay, so we have the major and major, minor, minor. So just remember that the two small ones, because minor thirds are smaller than major thirds, the two small ones make a diminished. The two big ones, majors, make the augmented. And then if you have one of each, you can get a minor or a major triad. And if the major comes first, so if a major third comes first, then minor third, it's a major triad. If it's a minor, tri uh, minor third, major third, then it's a minor. And if you have two minor, it's diminished. Two, augmented, uh, two major, it's augmented. So that's basically it. Now, if you've, you can see these chords written at, you know, tons of different ways. And, you know, they're not always going to be in this uh, position. They could be in a different inversion. So uh, to find out if they're augmented, what you need to do is first put them in a row so that they're three intervals in a row. Not three intervals in a row. Three thirds in a row, I meant to say. <laughs> so say you had an F way up here and the A was down there. So you'd rearrange them so that they make up this kind of snowman thing where you have dut dut dut. And then you can count what the spaces are between, like what the intervals are between them, go like, okay, that's major third, major third, oh, this must be augmented. That's how you go about doing it. So if you have three notes and they're making a chord but you're not sure what it is, first arrange them and then count the interval spaces between the two, like between the notes, and then there you go. So that's basically it for the augmented and diminished triads, but we've got lots more to do in this lesson, so let's get on to that. Hey guys, so this is the next part that we're gonna do. This is going through the major, minor, uh, harmonic, and melodic scales and basically showing how um, they relate in the triads because later down the road, um, this sort of prepares you for harmony because uh, you're always going to be dealing, if you're doing harmonic analysis, the classical Western music style, you always uh, mark your chords in the sense that you're going to be doing Roman numerals for the main chords and you do... Uh, we use like these figures, numbers for what inversion, but we're actually going to be covering both in this one uh, lesson right here. So this is going to be pretty critical stuff here for uh, you down the road if you want to go into harmony down the road. And I just said down the road like three times there, I think. <laughs> 
Whoopie, whoopsies. Okay, so basically, what what is this useful for? Well, harmony and lots of other stuff. So pay close attention. All right, now, so our first one up top here is major. Now, as you'll notice, I have I, two I's, three I's, and as you are noticing, this is going in Roman numeral style counting, except for here, it's back to one again. Now, you're also probably gonna notice that this is uppercase, and this is lowercase, and this is lowercase, and this is uppercase, and this is uppercase, and this is lowercase, and this is lowercase, and that's uppercase. So what is going on? Well, when we do these sort of things, we use the upper and lower case to denote if it's going to be um, major or minor or augmented and diminished. Now, um, remember how major and uh, augmented would be the two bigger ones, and minor and diminished are the two smaller ones, like they're more condensed together. The notes are squished together closer than, like augmented are quite far apart, diminished are very squished together. So the minor and the diminished are all going to be under lowercase and the major or the augmented will all be uppercase. So basically just by looking at this you can tell okay this has got to be major or augmented, major augmented, major augmented except it's even simpler than that because if it's augmented it's going to have a little x beside it. See right here how there's a little x? So this is uppercase and there's an X, so that tells us that this chord is going to be augmented. Over here, it's uppercase, but there's no X, so it's obviously major. Here, it's lowercase, but there's no circle, so it's minor. Here, it's lowercase and there's a circle, so it's diminished. Okay? So, just remember those basic principles there, and that'll help you diagnose what's going on in the chord. And also, if you're analyzing a chord, you need to be able to write it down properly so whoever else is reading your you know analyzation will be able to tell what's going on otherwise you can get you know marked wrong okay so now okay all major scales have the same way like the, um, they're not going to be changing in other words the first uh, chord or triad of the first key in say C major G major A major B flat major whatever they're always going to be major, okay? So the one chord, that's, do you remember when we were doing um, scale degrees, how one is the tonic, uh, tonic, two is uh, supertonic, three is median, and so on and so forth? It's kind of the same idea. We use these, one, like the one is the tonic, so this is, we would also call this the tonic chord, okay? So if I am in, Say I'm playing a P, uh, I'm doing analysis, I'm just going to write in the, I'm going to write in one if I see the one chord in the piece. Obviously there's more to it than that and we're going to, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover this because I wasn't sure if I'm going to go too in depth in harmony. But this is taught in this level of theory so I was going to teach it. Okay, so, but basically uh, we're signifying what chord or what is going on in the piece by this number. So that's called harmonic analysis. All right, sounds scary, doesn't it? <laughs> sounds painful too. Anyway, it's like, oh, my harmonic analysis. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, now, so one, this is the one chord or the triad, okay? So C, E, and G, okay? Now, it's very simple, we just go up in thirds. So this is a major triad, so it's major, so we call that the one chord. So now we go up to the next note, which is D in C major, and now we put a third up and another third up. And this does, you don't add any accidentals unless it's in the key signature. So in C major, there's no accidentals, but down here, I have this written in C minor, and E flat and A flat are present, and also B flat, except in C minor, if you are um, going up in the harmonic scale, the seventh note is raised. So technically, I don't actually, excuse me, have to put a natural there, but I put one there so that um, basically you guys could see. But I'm sort of getting all over the place here, so I'm just going to stick with this major one for now. So it does have to follow the key, uh, the key signature. So say I was in D major or some other key with an F sharp. And now I'm going D, F, A. Okay, I have to put a sharp in here. 
because it's in the key signature. So basically all you're doing is just take your, uh, your three notes, so C, E, G, and now go up one note in the scale, up one note in the scale, up one note in the scale, and that's what you're doing. You're just playing a triad for every note of the scale that you're playing. And then uh, you're playing it thirds apart, so just D to F to A, or E to G to B, or F to A to C, okay? So they're always like the snowman effect, and you just go up, 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 like that. And um, so if you land on any key where there's an accidental, so say you're going over to F, and it's supposed to be F sharp, well, instead of playing D, F, A, you have to put the F sharp there. That's basically how that works. So Roman numeral triads, if you say I'm playing the, th you know, the three chord of E major, you'd go up to the third note in E major, okay? And then you just play the notes in th a third apart and make sure that they land where the key signature would be, okay? So it's quite, uh, that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple, I think. Um, now, this pattern always stays the same, because if we're always adhering to the key signature and we're always using the same interval, it's always going to be the same outcome all the time, no matter what key you go to. So, one chord is always major, in a major key scale. Two chord is always minor. Three chord is always minor. Four chord is always major. Five chord is always major. And of course, you can also call these the tonic chord, the supertonic chord, the mediant chord, the su uh, subdominant chord, the dominant chord, right? Just when we learn those terms. Okay, and by the way, if you kind of forget any of that stuff, it's important that you go back and you make sure that you remember it, because it does take your brain up to about six times before it actually remembers something um, on a more permanent level, okay? So if you don't get it, you know, if some something's not sticking in your head and you're just like, uh... Go back, review it a few more times. Over time, you will get it. All you have to do is just keep feeding it into your brain, and eventually your brain's like, oh, you want me to remember this. Oh, well, okay, I'll do it now. You've showed it to me enough times. I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so just, I know, fight your brain. Keep putting that stuff in there. And so this is a very important chart. You're going to be using this all the time in harmony and when you go into higher levels as well. So this is very good prep work for you. Okay, so the four chord is major, five chord is major. Notice that the fourth and the fifth, remember how perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect first, perfect octave, all those are all of those are major in a major scale. Ooh. And the minors are the ones that, you know, they can be major or minor, like major, minor second, major, minor third, whatever. Okay, so I've always thought of it that way because I just relay my intervals over on top of it. Okay, now, when we get to the sixth chord, that's minor, and the seventh chord is a little bit special. As you can see, it's got the minor lowercase one, but it has the little circle here, so that means that it's actually diminished. Okay, so if you look at this, it's going B to D to F. Okay. So we know that a diminished uh, triad is when you have minor, minor. So a minor third and a minor third. Okay, so in B major, it's you have D sharp and C sharp and a lot of other sharps. So it would actually, in B major, your triad would be B, D sharp, F sharp. And we don't have sharps on either one of these. So we know that you have to lower the third one to make it minor, okay? And then if this one's lowered too, it's definitely a diminished because both of them are minor thirds. From here to here is a minor third, and D to F, well that's minor as well, because major would be D to F sharp. So the B, D to F is a diminished chord, or triad, and it uh, is going to be the 7 diminished. So you basically have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 diminished chord, so the seven diminished, and then back to the one chord. I mean, you know, it is kind of like the eighth, but no one calls it the eighth because you're just using the exact same notes that you did there. It's just an octave higher. So 
even though we're going up in step motion, you know, you don't go back to one when you're counting like ducks. You're not like one duck, two duck, three duck, four duck, five duck, six duck, seven duck, one duck, two duck, <laughs> right? You don't do that. But, um, but in music theory we do because <laughs> uh, we're a little bit different. Anyway, okay, so uh, that's how that works. So memorize these. So I just like to remember again that the perfect intervals, like perfect unison, perfect octave, and perfect fourth and fifth, they're all the, I just think of them as special. So they're like all the major ones, okay? All right, so that's major. So now, you're always gonna write those that way whenever you write them anytime at all. Like if they're like, write the, the fourth chord in A major, you're gonna, you know it's automatically, I know it's major, done. It's a done deal. Then you just have to think of what notes those would be in uh, A major chord. And that's all you do. So you just go D, F sharp, uh, A, I think. The four, yeah, that would be it. So you go A, and then go up four notes if you're doing the four chords. So A, B, C sharp, D. So that's the fourth one. Then you go uh, try it up. So like a third up. So one third up from D is F. And F sharp is in the key of A major. So you go to F sharp. And then A is uh, not sharp, it's just a tonic, so you just go D, F, F sharp, A. There you go. That would be a four chord in A major. So that's basically how I think when I'm going through the process. And as you do it more and more, you're going to get way faster. Like when I first started, I'm like, uh, uh, huh? What? Oh, yeah, I was just very, very slow, and I did not get it. <clears throat> get it very well. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Throat's a little dry right now. Okay, so next up, at the bottom here we have minor, and as you can see, I drew out these two other lines, and don't this top line is what goes with this example, but I didn't have enough room to write out ascending and descending and melodic, and I didn't want to erase the board and redo it because, I mean, you can just take my word for it, or you can do your own research if you want to, but. Okay, now. Harmonic going up and down is going to be the same way all the time, like a harmonic minor. So the first chord is always one minor, which makes a lot of sense because if you're playing a minor key and your first chord is not a minor, it's kind of like what? Right? Okay, anyway. So your next one is minor as well. And keep in mind, see how I'm adding the key signature as I'm going up? So uh, not the key signature, I'm writing in the accidentals that would fall in the key signature. So we have B flat, E flat, A flat, but keep in mind B flat doesn't apply, it's raised up to at the natural because um, it's the seventh note in C minor, so the seventh note goes up in the harmonic, right? Seventh note's raised. So I don't actually have to draw the natural in because there's nothing that is naturally in out, but I wanted to do that to show you guys where that, you know, it, it does have to be natural. You just wouldn't put it in. Uh, not natural, but raised, okay? So that seventh note is raised. You always want to watch out for that when you're doing minors, minor triads. Okay, so we've got minor, minor. We've got not major, but augmented. So it's the third one is the augmented third. Then we've got minor fourth right here. So the fourth one's minor. This one is major. This one is ma uh, major as well. So the five and the six are major. The seven is diminished. And then we are back to minor again. Now, here's the melodic way. So this arrow pointing up is this is the way it is on the way going up, and this is the way on the going down. And that's because you have to low, you have to raise the sixth and the seventh on the way up, and then lower them on the way down. And I don't have that drawn out because this is the harmonic minor, and I obviously didn't have enough room. But anyway, okay. So uh, it's pretty much very, very close to the same as the harmonic. So these are the same, these are the same, these are the same, this is not. So the fourth is major now, whereas it was minor in the uh, harmonic minor. Uh, these are both major, so the five is major still. Uh, the six is diminished sixth, okay, for the melodic going up. Then we have the, de uh, I almost said demonic, <laughs> instead of, I was thinking something else. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. <laughs> oh man. 
Okay, so this is seven, diminished. See, I was thinking harmonic and diminished, and then I almost put them together, and yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so, so crazy. Okay, so this is the diminished seventh right here. So our seven is diminished again. And then uh, the one again is back to minor. Now notice here, the major se uh, this, in the major scale, the seventh of the this one, this one, and this one are all diminished. The only one that isn't is the melodic, okay? The melodic isn't diminished because it's lowered back on the way down. So you actually have something called a subtonic, not a leading tone. When you have a, because you actually have a whole tone distance between the C and the B flat, okay? So uh, that's why it's not like the way it lays out now. You're making a chord because you're going B flat, D, and then F, which is B flat major. So that's a major chord. So that's why we have major seven right here. So the seventh is a major in the melodic going down. Although you never really run into this that often. If I was going to say anything, memorize the major one, That's you're going to run into that all the time. Harmonic minor would be your secondary backup, and then melodic is like, doesn't really matter so much, unless you're going into really high theory. Okay, but let's just cover this anyway and get it over with. And so this little guy here, I was kind of having a hard time showing you how this was minor, so I just drew it small. And so the V, so the fifth one on the melodic going down is minor. The fourth is going down, it's minor. This one is major, it's not augmented. There's no X. So the third going down in the melodic is not augmented. And the minor, uh, sorry, not the minor, the second is diminished on the going down. And then we've got minor melodic, or the minor one for the melodic again. So as you can see, the bo as, as you go down on the melodic, things change a lot. And that's because we've, uh, from the harmonic, and that's because, you know, there's a lot of different changes going on with the sixth and the seventh note being lowered back down. Okay, so that was a mouthful and a half. <laughs> so uh, hopefully your brain isn't too crammed up. Uh, I would, like I said before, I wouldn't worry so much about this. Focus on this. I would really like it if you guys can copy this out, remember this, memorize this pattern. This is kind of like secondary. It's not super important, but I wanted to show it just to be a little bit more thorough, okay? Um, and if you want to, you can come back later and relearn that part anyway. Okay, so there's that. Now let's move on to the next part. Okay, guys, so this is the last part of this video, so bear with me. This is pretty simple, actually, compared to what we just looked at. Okay, so this is the chord position numbers, also sometimes known as figured bass and other names like this would be the lingo of how you're going to read uh, harmonic analysis. So like in this video, you've learned a very big chunk of learning how to name chords, okay? In uh, standard uh, like Western European uh, music theory, okay? So that's a pretty big milestone. This is a very good, pr like you c could not, uh, you know, start doing harmony without knowing this stuff. So this is like preparatory stuff for harmony, but it's also part of this level of theory. Okay, so, now, we have chord positions and uh, inversions as we know them, as from before. So we have the root position, the first inversion, and the second inversion, right? Okay. Now, um, we have to have like a shorthand way in music theory if we're trying to describe, okay, this is a chord that's going on, but what inversion is it in? Well, we need to be able to clarify that for more accuracy. Okay, so whenever you have a chord or a triad or whatever, I can use chord and triad interchangeably because um, in this sense, it's not just going to be strictly a triad, but it could also be um, a chord, okay, with four notes or five notes or generally four notes, but anyway. Okay, so root. Root position, we all know that's dun-dun-dun, stacked up just like a snowman, okay? Now... Uh, what we're going to call that by shorthand is 5-3, okay? Now, where does that number come from? It's actually hilariously simple. You take your bottom note here, okay, one of the, if you go to this note right here, it's a third away, so that's where you get the three from, and you go from here to here, it's a fifth away, see, so that's where you get that one from. Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> 
Okay, so that's literally how they get all these numbers, so I'm not going to just re-explain it for those two. Basically, like if you go from D to F, that's a third. From, F, uh, from D to A, that's a fifth. That's where you're getting the 3 and the 5, okay? So root position is 5, 3, okay? Now, first inversion is called 6, 3. Now I have brackets around the three because when I was taught how to do music harmony analysis, or harmonic analysis, I should have said, um, the three was sort of kind of like um, optional because uh, if you just go six, it was like the shorthand way of just saying, yeah, that's the first inversion. And then if you wanted to say second inversion, you had to specify six, four, okay? so. Uh, you can put 6-3, and that's just as correct, I guess, as it's more safe, I guess, you could go than if you just put 6. But you can put 6, like you'll see 1-6. And I'll show you what that actually looks like underneath after we're done this. So first inversion is 6-3, and second inversion is 6-4. Okay? Cool. And I'll, I guess I'll just explain it one more time is where you get these numbers from. This is a sixth, the part, from the bottom to the top, and from here to here, this is a third, and from here to here, this is a fourth, and from here to here, this is a sixth. That's how you get those numbers. Okay, so how you'd use these numbers is, say we had one of those chords that we just were looking at, okay? Say I want to say we're in this key of C major, so C major, okay? And I write one, and I put 6, 4. So with this amount of data, I, I, I can tell you exactly what this would actually look like. I can see an image in my head of what this would be. It would be a G on the bottom, and it would be a C, and then an E, like that. Now, um, one thing is, when you specify an inversion, it technically is only talking and describing about the bottom note. So, because in harmony we have moving voices and we don't always have them in the same thing because that'd be pretty boring. So up top it can actually change. So I could actually have not my C here, but I could have it up here. Okay? And that's a whole other topic. But basically I know there's a G on the bottom and this is from the C chord. That's what it tells me. Okay? Now if I take this away and make it a 6-3, so 1, 6, 3, well, now I know it's going to be in first inversion. So if it's 1, 6, 3 in C major, it's going to be, uh, let's see, it should be E and then G and C, or whatever. I mean, those can go wherever they want to, so I shouldn't even say that, but it'd be E on the bottom for sure, okay? And again, if I had 5, 3, then I know it's going to be C on the bottom. Not that writing this, again, makes any difference at all, but whatever. Anyway, so that's what I'd like you guys to look at and remember, is the chord position numbers for, uh, these are your basic chords. Uh, we're going to also go into seventh chords, and those have different chord numbers because you have more notes and more combinations. So that's coming up in a couple videos here. All right, so let's get on to homework now. Homework. No. Okay guys, so here's what your homework's going to be. So, I first want you to do is draw 10 augmented and 10 diminished, so that's 20 total. I want you to draw, uh, like, pick, basically draw 10 augmented triads and 10 diminished triads and put them in different inversions, like spend, you know, don't draw all of them in root position. But you can think of them first in root and then put them into other ways and just play around with them. Okay, so play around with that, get comfortable creating uh, diminished and augmented uh, triads right there. Next, I want you to memorize the major uh, chart, <laughs> the major scale chart I probably should have written, uh, with when I was talking about, you know, what the order is. So it's major for the for chord, uh, the one chord, and then minor, minor, major, major, minor, and then diminished minor and then major, uh, major again. Okay, so you go through that, memorize that, and then while using that chart in your head or whatever, uh, if you can't memorize it 
uh, by then. I mean, you could use this to this exercise below to help you memorize it. I want you to pick a key, pick a random, like, be like, okay, pick one of the things from the major scale. So say you pick G major for one of your things. So G major four, and then write five, three. So G major four, five, three. So four in Roman numerals, and then the five, three on the side. And then I want you to draw out a staff, a little tiny thing, and then draw on that chord, okay? And then you go to another one, you go, okay, B flat major, uh, three, so it's a minor one, and then go six, six three or whatever. So it's in first inversion, or five three or whatever. So you mix it up, do 10 of those, and that should be good, okay? So this, uh, this lesson here, is laying a lot of groundwork for basically your uh, introduction into harmony. So this is some very interesting stuff. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Everything's good. Hope you're moving along, you're enjoying everything. And uh, good luck and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.